day, everybody. Uh, today, we want to look at familiarization of uh, laboratory instruments to ourselves. We want to make uh, a quick, brief uh, introduction to laboratory apparatus. So, we'll be starting with our glassware. First and foremost, when you get into the lab, it is very, very important that you know what your glassware or your all of the laboratory apparatus, what they are, how they are, what they are used for. You need to know the state or the condition of all of your apparatus. It is very, very important because that can as well help you to carry out uh, effortless uh, practical as the case might be. So for this practical or for this uh, introduction, we'll be starting with what we refer to as the glassware, instruments that are made of glass. So that is where we'll be starting from. So I have those here by my left hand side. So that is where we'll be starting from. First and foremost, I want to start with what we refer to as the test tube. Okay, let me bring this here. The test tube. Now, this is what we refer to as a test tube. It is a cylindrical uh, glassware that is hollow in nature. It has hole in it that can be used to actually contain some specimen or some amounts, depending on some chemicals rather, depending on what type of uh, practical they are intending to carry out. So, this is an example of what we refer to as a test tube. So, that's the first one of starting with. Right? Let me put this here. Laboratory instruments. That is where we are starting from. So the first one we are talking about, we said we are talking about the test tube. That is the first one we are actually talking about. So I have made mention of the test tube and I said it is a glass well. Now it is of different sizes depending on the kind of practical you are carrying out. If you look at this now, you can see that these are two different test tubes but they are not of the same size. This is longer in size than the longer in length compared to this one. So we have varying sizes of the test tube. So that is the first one we are talking about. And then for us to actually use our test tube effectively, there is what we call the test tube holder. This is what we refer to as the test tube holder. So we use it to hold our test tube, preventing the test tube chemicals, whatever chemical you are working on, preventing it from pouring on you. So we can use our test tube holder to actually hold our test tube. In case we have to pour some corrosive chemicals into the test tube, you can actually use your test tube holder to hold it this way. If you hold it, your test tube with the test tube holder, it prevents the chemical from spilling or splashing on you. And these test tube holders, they are uh, different types. Like the one I'm having here has a uh, plastic or rubber handle. This is another type of test tube holder that has wooden handle, so they have different types. So uh, that is that about the test tube. And then here I have what is called the test tube rack. As you can see, I am using it to hold what I refer to as my test tubes. So it can, it, they, well, there are different sizes and different types. This is actually made of wood. So we have the wooden test tube hold, uh, holder, uh, sorry, test tube rack. We have made uh, the ones made of plastics as well. So we have the plastic and the metal test tube racks. So now if you look at this place here, Probably you have just finished using your test tube and you have actually washed or rinsed your test tube. You can just invert your test tube here and place it here while the test tubes drain. You can see. So you can actually do that here. That is what all of these are made for. You use it to, what, to drain your test tubes. And after they are fully drained, then you can invert them and put them right back in the test tube uh, uh, rack. And then we have what is called the corks that can be used to cover or close the test tube. For adventure, you are working with chemicals that uh, can easily vaporize. So you need something to, uh, to cook the test tube. So that is what we use this for. So that is that about the test tubes. Now, we have this one here called the boiling tube. Actually, it looks like a test tube, but it's much bigger in size than the test tube. We actually use this one to heat chemicals. So we uh, put in our chemical, whatever specimen we want to heat, 
we put it in here and then we can apply heat to it. We don't use the test tube directly for heating, we make use of the boiling tube. So they look similar in shape. It looks like a test tube, but it's much bigger in size than the test tube. So that is about the boiling tube. So that is the one we have talked about. So right now we have talked about the test tube. We have talked about the test tube holder. We have also talked about the test tube rack. And now we talked about the boiling, the boiling tube. So the one we want to talk about next is we want to talk about uh, okay let me go this far let's talk about okay before I come to this let's quickly look at what I have here this is called a measuring cylinder a measuring cylinder the measuring cylinder so what do we what do we use measuring cylinders for we actually use measuring cylinders to measure chemicals particularly when we want to dilute our chemicals we need to act, uh, measure accurately so we use measuring cylinders because they are actually graded cylinder our test tubes are not graded we do not have measurements on our test tubes but we have measurements graded on our measuring cylinders so they are accurately used in the measurement of uh, reagents and they are of different sizes as well this for example is a 10 mil measuring cylinder here i have another one which is a 15 mil this is another type of measuring cylinder this one is a 50 mil measuring cylinder we have other types as well this one here is a 100 mil measuring cylinder i have here i have a 500 mil measuring cylinder we still have varying ones as well. Okay, let's see this one. This here is a 250ml measuring cylinder and this one is a 1000ml or a DM cube, one DM cube measuring cylinder. So they are of varying sizes. We actually use them to measure chemicals. Depending on the quantity of the chemical you want to measure, you actually have the measuring cylinders that can what fit into that. And for eventually you want to measure quantities that are even more than one DM cube, all you need to do is to use the one DM cube and other types of measuring cylinders to actually get the quantity of the reagents or the specimen that you're actually trying to uh, measure. So that is about the measuring cylinder. And here we have what is called the glass jar. This is the what the glass jar, a jar with a lid. Actually, it is used biologically as well as in chemistry lab. In biology, it is used to hold specimens. It is used to hold organs or specimens. And then in chemistry, it is actually used to uh, curtail gas, uh, to curtail gases. That is what the glass jar is used for. We use it to curtail gases. Glass jar. So, we actually use this one to Hold gases, gases, we are preventing them from escaping. So that is that about the glass jar. And next we have here, we have the funnel. This is a funnel. So, the funnel. Now, like I said earlier on, majority of the instruments we are using are of different types. Now, this is a funnel and this is also another funnel. So we have them in different uh, types. We have different types of funnel. This is made of glass, while this is made of plastic. Now, the reason is this. Sometimes we work with some chemicals that actually react with plastic. So for such chemicals, you will not use a plastic funnel. You will be needing a glass funnel. And what we use it to do is to pour our chemicals. Most times when we are carrying out titrations, we use it to dispense our chemicals into the burette. You can see this here. So that is what we actually use it to do. When we want to pour our chemical, particularly during acid-based dilution, we want to pour our acid into the burette, this tube here, we actually use the funnel to dispense our acid into the burette. That is what we use the funnel for. So after that, let me go to talk about this. This is called 
a conical flask. This is called a conical flask, conical or elemer. The conical flask, the conical flask or the elemer, elemer flask. That is what this particular uh, flask is called. Now, we use this one majorly during titration. We use this particular flask majorly during titration. It is called conical flask because of its shape. You can actually see it having a conical base with a cylindrical neck. That is how it is. And also, like we have talked about other glasswares, it is also of different types. This is another type of conical flask, but if you look at them, you can see that they are varying sizes. So we have different sizes, starting from 25 mils and the rest of those. So that is what our conical flask is. We actually use it during titration. After we must have dispensed our base into the conical flask, and we have added our uh, indicator, as the case might be, depending on the kind of acid, uh, the kind of titration you are carrying, uh, carrying out. Probably your indicator is methyl orange or methyl red or uh, bromotimol blue and the rest of those. So you must have added drops of the indicator into the content of the conical flask, which is usually the base, and then you step gently, you just shake step gently to allow the indicator mix with the content of the conical flask before you start dispensing your acid or running your acid into it. So that is about the conical flask. And then we have what is called the beakers. We have the beakers. This is an example of a beaker. The beaker. The beaker. So like I said, this is an example of a beaker. Now, this beaker actually is used for nitration purposes as well as so or many other reactions. We use this beaker for those, and they are also of varying sizes. They are also of varying sizes. As you can see, this is, we have this one to be a 250 mil beaker. This is a 500 mil beaker. And we also have this one here, which is 600 mil beaker, and a whole lot of those uh, sizes. So they are also of varying sizes.